Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have an active mobility routine that you guys can do pre-workout, post-workout, or even just use as your own little movement combo. It is all working on mobility, mobility being flexibility and strength together in movement. So that's exactly what we're working on today. What you're going to need is some sort of band. I have a resistance band here. You can use power band, booty bands, whatever works for you. You can also swap it out for something like a towel or a piece of material, a t-shirt, whatever. That's what you're going to need. Let's get started. Let's get moving. Today we're going to be doing a voiceover to help with tips and cues whilst you're doing these movements. So the very first one that we have is a banded point and flex. So we're going to place the band around the toe, pull back with a little bit of resistance and you're going to be pushing your foot forward and backwards in two different positions. So you can see when I'm pushing forward that's a point motion. And when I pull back, that is a flex motion. So we're warming up our ankles with this one, all the stability muscles inside that area. It's a great one for before running, going for a walk, or even just doing any high intensity workouts with jumping or jolting of those areas. Next up, we're going into some banded rotations. So we're going to place the band again over the foot. And we're going to rotate our ankle through in a few different motions, forward and back. Again, this is warming up our ankle joint and all the stabilizer muscles. Next up we have some very basic neck rolls, so you're going to form the biggest motion that you can, circular motion starting to the left, going right round the back, coming back round to the front. We're also going to do this the other way as well, so after you've done a couple in one direction, we're going to swap up the other direction. Remember to keep it nice and slow, really softly going through the movement. Then we have some shoulder rolls. So the motion is a shrug, then pushing our shoulders back and away from our head, coming down in a scooping motion back up to our neutral position at the start before we shrug again and do the whole motion over. So really trying to get, again, the biggest circle you can with your shoulders in this exercise. You can see when my shoulders are pushed back, I'm trying to open my chest as much as possible. In the shrug, I even hunch a little bit as well. So make sure you're trying to extend the position of each part of this movement. Then we've got some arm rotation. So we're doing these singular. We're starting with the left arm. We're going to slowly bring the arm up with a supinated palm. And then as we reach the top, we're rotating through the joint, coming back down the opposite way as far as possible. You're trying to make, again, the biggest circular motion that you can with your shoulder joint and your arm in general. And then we're going to swap and repeat on the other side. Next up we have shoulder dislocate. So you're going to grab your band, towel, t-shirt, whatever it is that you're using, and you're going to be going through the movement forward and back. Make sure this is a comfortable movement. You don't wanna be hurting at all in this. We're really trying to push how close those hands are. So if it's too easy, bring those hands in. If it's too hard, push them out. Here you can see I'm just demonstrating with the t-shirt that I was wearing. So you can easily use anything inside the home for a home version of this without having to use a power band. Moving on to a cat cow movement. So you're going to hunch as much as you can, really driving through the chest, making almost a turtle back figure 
and then drop into an open chested arch. The shoulders and the bottom stay quite level with this and we drop our tummy as low to the ground as possible. You're gonna go through that motion from the cat to the cow, forward and back as many times as you need. And then we're gonna transition into our rotations, our cat-cow rotations. The way that you do this is you drop to one side, rotate to the other, and you're forming again a full 360 circle with your core. We're going to do one way, stop, and then do it in the reverse. Moving on to a seal stretch to extended cat. Weird names, I know, but this is what they're called in gymnastics. Our seal stretch is the first motion. You're pushing your hips down to the ground, opening up through the shoulders, arching through the back, and then moving into the extended cat position, which is arms down to the ground whilst keeping our bottom up in the air, really trying to focus on the arch in the upper back in that second position. So go through this motion between the two positions as many times as you feel comfortable till you feel open and stretched. And then we can move on to the next one, which is a downward dog to all fours. So you're starting in the downward dog position, heels are flat on the ground, dropping down onto our knees, keeping the core nice and engaged, and then returning back up to our downward dog. Remembering in your downward dog, that the heels to the ground is a major part of the exercise. You really need to be focusing on this if you want to feel the stretch. And when you're coming down, we're just engaging muscles and controlling the motion into the all fours position. Moving on to our next combo, which is our lunge to hamstring stretch. This is one of my absolute favorites. So we're pushing forward in a lunge, making sure our knee never crosses our toe. We want your toe to be the furthest point forward and then we're going to be leaning back into the weight of our back leg, straightening out the front leg and stretching out the front hammy. It is a great workout and a really good exercise to warm up those legs before any lower body session. I'm going to swap and do it on the other leg as always. Remembering in this exercise to keep your hips nice and square, you don't want to be turning out to favor any more of a side split or straddle stretch. We're really trying to keep the focus on those hips in a square position. From here, we are going to transition into a lunge hip rotation. Again, one of my favorite exercises for opening up the hips. So we're gonna go into the original lunge position. We're gonna focus on our lower hip, so the one that is furthest away from the starting leg. And we're going to do some circular motions with that hip. It's gonna feel weird, it's gonna look weird, but it's a great exercise. So do some one way, reverse the other way, and then swap legs. Moving into our hip rotations. Again, one of my favorite exercises for the hip openers. So we're starting with a lying bent leg around the world. You're going to come up to a tuck with one leg, rotate out to the side and return back to the neutral position. We're up on our elbows for this one just to release a little bit of tension in the position that we're doing. So when you're up on your elbows, you're not doing it as intense as what it would be if you were lying flat. So again, doing this on each side, and then we're going to transition into a straight leg. So same movement, but straight leg, both sides. And then heading straight into a double leg around the world. So we're doing, again, the same movement, However, you're coming up with both legs, out to the side with both legs, returning to neutral with both legs. Make sure you're going through this motion nice and slowly. It is a very controlled motion and you're really feeling the different parts of your hip opening up in these movements. 
Next up, we have a deep squat to pike stance. So we're going to put our feet a little bit wider for this. It's almost in a deep pike to straddle stance, but we're going to place our hands near our toes. If you can't reach your toes comfortably, you can grab on your shins or the back of your ankles. And we're going to go as low as you can in a squat. Knees are pushing out and then straightening out those legs and turning into a standing straddle stretch or a standing pike stretch, depending on how far out your legs are from each other. Moving on, we are going to be doing a standing straddle sway stretch. So we're going to place our feet further apart than shoulder width, nice comfortable position, bend at the hips until you get into a deep stretch. However, we're going to relax from the hips up. So our full upper body is bending over and trying to relax as much as possible. Swaying from your right to your left leg, again, really trying to loosen up that upper body. We want it to be dead weight and you are moving between your left and your right leg and feeling the stretch in your hammies. Second last exercise, we have a side lunge with a bend over. So you're going to side lunge into a position that is comfortable for you. Once you reach that lower position, you're going to go opposite arm, opposite leg and reach over to the far leg. Standing up and then doing the other side. So we're going to rotate between each side for single motions. Again, I'm just demonstrating some different levels of flexibility, different depths of the side lunges so you guys can see what I would expect of a beginner, intermediate and more advanced athlete. lucky last exercise we have is a tuck to pike. This one is a great one for any kind of movement that you have during the day. I'm just demonstrating here again the different motions for a beginner, intermediate and advanced but the idea is that in the tuck motion your legs are as close together as possible, ankles are pushing down into the ground and we're moving into a straight leg motion. So from your tuck position, straighten out your legs, try and get as close with your chest to your legs as possible and return back down to the tuck, really driving through those heels. mobility routine it is super crucial to be adding this kind of stuff into your training if you haven't already mobility is the golden nugget to movement let me repeat the golden nugget to movement you must have mobility to be able to perform at your absolute peak in any kind of training so make sure you guys are onto that if you need any help with programming mobility work body weight strength building all of that sort of stuff, I have it on the Move With Us app. You guys know I'm a Move With Us coach, so all of my programming and coaching goes on there. So check it out if you haven't already, and I will see you guys on the next video.